Okay, and welcome to another Cool Dude Clem video. Yes, he's back. <laughs> I know it's a long time since I've done any videos, but the thing is, I've been so busy working on episode 4 of the Star Kids, I just haven't had time. I haven't even had time to do live streams. So yeah, I'm putting a few scenes together. I'm going to start animating those when I've got the voice track done and everything. Anyway, I'm going to do a little video about audio today. Now, I'm going to do an experiment with this BSR record player. So, inside we have a ceramic cartridge. The same exact type of cartridge you see in one of those crappy Crosby things. And this is pretty much my daily driver for record players now, because although I've got that much better Sony thing, the thing is... Even though that's got linear tracking and magnetic cartridge and direct drive, getting a cartridge for that thing is ridiculously expensive. I mean, I have to shell out like 20 big ones for a cartridge. I mean, 20 big ones for a needle for that one. And it desperately needs a new needle, so I cannot really play it anymore. But these things, you know, cost practically nothing. So it makes more sense. So, okay, yeah, sure, it doesn't sound as good as higher end ones, but I'm alright with sacrificing a little bit of sound quality. I'm not an audiophile. So what I'm going to do in this little experiment is first we're going to hear the output of this cartridge connected directly up to a line input because these can give out almost line level audio. It will work but it won't sound too good because that will really load down the cartridge and it's going to sound crap. Then I'm going to try it through these two circuits. I've got this valve circuit here which can take a high impedance input and spit out a low impedance output so that should sound a lot better when I put it through this and also got the solid state equivalent so that's what we're gonna do and for those of you curious this is the circuit diagram so the solid state version uses a JFET and the valve version uses a VT137 and if you compare the two circuits you can see they are exactly the same. So what these two circuits will do, well, it'll take the input from the cartridge and basically convert it to a low impedance output. Because ceramic cartridges have a very high impedance so you need an input stage that's got a very high impedance and JFETs and valves pretty much fit that perfectly. Okay, so here we go with ceramic cartridge connected directly to line in. Now, I hope the music that I've chosen is YouTube safe. This isn't my actual taste in music, but don't think I'm going to get into any copyright for this. So let's give that a little listen. Okay, well, that sounded pretty bad. It sounded very scratchy, absolutely no bass, sounded exactly like a Crosley. That was loading down the cartridge so much that I had to have the levels turn right up, all the way up as far as they could go, and I still had to boost the level in my video editor. But anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to put this through those two circuits that I made and see what improvement it makes to the sound. So first, we're going to do it through the valve circuit. That's rather ingenious the way I've got this powered. This whole circuit is just running off one output from this transformer. So this gives out about 30 volts. And I've got a full bridge rectifier connected up to the capacitor, which will give us about 40 volts DC. And to power the filaments, I've got the two filaments in series, so they both get about half the voltage, but still need to reduce that voltage a little bit, so in line with the filaments, I have a 200 ohm rheostat. It is a rheostat, not a variable resistor, which just drops the voltage down enough, so the filaments each get 12 volts, 
and the rest of the circuit gets about 40, so we've got a nice good voltage there. Now, some of you might think that this is, you know, a phono preamp. Well, it isn't. This doesn't provide any amplification. As a matter of fact, the signal you get out of this is a little bit less than what you put in. And it doesn't provide any equalization at all. So what you're going to hear is the sound as it comes out of the cartridge. It's just being buffered through the tubes or the valves, depending on what you want to call them, in this little circuit here. So, I'm going to plug the transformer in, but first I'm going to start the record playing. You can hear that needle talk right away. I know I can hear, I know the microphone can hear that because I can see the waveform on the computer as I'm recording this. I'm just going to go plug the transformer in. Right, that's in. Filaments are coming up. And we should hear in a few seconds, we should hear. Well, I think you can tell that's quite an improvement. The only trouble is I do have a little bit of hum. I'm not sure where that's coming from. Both circuits I've tried are giving me this hum, so it's not this in particular. It's just something I'm going to have to work out. And now for the final part, let's try this with the solid state circuit. Now if you remember, the circuit for this is exactly the same as the valve circuit. The only difference is a couple of resistors and this is the power supply. Right, so I'll just hook up the battery. And let's see how this sounds. Side, which I think sounds better. They both sounded really good. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do a comparison between the valve circuit and the solid state circuit and I'm going to keep switching between the two and decide which one I think sounds better. And then you can decide for yourself which you think sounds better. Airplanes tied up with string fly Gently bones and talking things Sighing A radio and phonograph Charlie Chaplin made us laugh Silently falling about Familiar things I keep around Near me Memories of my younger days
I don't know about you, but to me, they sounded equally good. I mean, I could not tell the difference. If I was doing a blindfold test, I would not be able to tell the difference between the JFET circuit and the valve circuit. They, they just both sounded equally good. The valve circuit probably added some harmonics, which you wouldn't really be able to hear anyway, so yeah. To me, they're, um, they're equally good. So, does this mean we're seeing the long-awaited return of Cool Dude Clem's electronic workshop? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, I'm still pretty busy with the Star Kids. I've got one of the storyboards taped to the wall, so I know what to do. But yeah, I am going to try and make more electronics videos. I mean, after all, that's what a lot of you subscribe for. And, you know, I really regret doing that video that I did, you know, a few months ago where I said I wouldn't do any more electronics videos. The thing is, I was really depressed and down at the time, and I just didn't want to do that anymore. But, you know, now I've kind of got back into it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but, yeah, I wish I could take it all back. I wish I could just go back in time and stop myself ever making that video because that was the stupidest thing I think I've ever done and I've done some pretty stupid things. So yeah, I am going to try and do some more edited electronics videos. They won't be as regular as I used to do them. I'm going to try and get one out at least once every month and um, the thing is I don't really have much to much really to show in the world of electronics at the moment but anyway um, I'm kind of rambling on and waffling and my train of thoughts has completely derailed and fallen down the embankment and everyone has died so yeah until next time goodbye